and this has happened, it's going to continue happening, and it has happened in the past, and it accounts for many of our tales, if you may, about our experience, about the experience of our ancestors with other beings, or when somebody else is coming, and all the missing gaps to all of our stories. The reason why they're missing is because we don't have the disc. Now we have the disc. And that's what I was saying. You got to salute the brother because he at least sat down and said, let me put it all together as far as getting the, everything that the chronologics and the time working because then we can set chronos. And once we set the chronosphere, which has nothing to just do with like some vampire with a, a siphon, uh, come on. Set the chronosphere because th that's, a, that's a, a Marillion sphere. That's your clock that you need to know. Well, where's the current moving? Like if the current was going through the ocean, and I talked about this experience, like I was on the ocean uh, the other week, and I saw this passageway going through. And all this stuff was on this passageway, all these fish and trash and all this stuff was going by. And I was like to the boat, I was like, yo, what's that? And he was like, that's the current. Now, anybody that's been out there fishing is like, you ain't seen the current before? Big city boy, deep pockets. But the reality is the current, obviously metaphysically inclined being says, that's the pathway right there. And then they will look up and they will notice certain things about the stars, certain things about the plants, and then they will start connecting a universal system, which Santos says is syncretism. So that already happened, synchronizing the chronosphere. Ours is not synchronized, though. And we need to get it in sync because right now we're serving in a tense as a collective, a projection of death. It's because a, one group of beings want to live on the planet by themselves. That's the truth. It's not just on the Georgia Guidestones. It's very well known that there's one group of beings, they just want this as a place they can hunt. They want to build their magnificent things for themselves, have their automations and all that in play, and hunt things as this grows wild again. Okay, that's it. <laughs> and that is not the projection we're going into, even if it's rewritten in stone. And that's why more powerful knowledge what I was told and what I came to even find out was that vein of granite running through Stone Mountain, Georgia. You got to understand, where is Georgia? Georgia is at the foot of the Caucasus Mountains. Okay? But there's another Georgia in the Edo. <laughs> so is there a connection? Yes. The vein of granite, that granite, which they built all the courthouses and they built all of the uh, um, post offices, that same granite was the same granite used to cap the pyramid because that vein runs that deep. When they're saying, well, where is this stones coming from? They would have had to get them for 50,000 miles away. No, silly. They went down. They know where the veins are. Any real uh, builder knows, you know, simple dousing <laughs> and you know where all the veins are. And then you're like, okay, there's a granite vein running right through here. So this is, these veins are frequencies of this planet. Okay, so that's why I'm saying there's a lot of fun that we're about to have because we're going to bring the entire planetary system back online as far as it spinning up, spin up, right? Get into the monotonic flow, get into the center, get it connected. You can't live separated. You will die out there. I've been in the cold vacuum of space living on a little bit of breath <laughs> like they got Tony Stark in the new uh, uh, Marvel comic movie, Peep Game. They're about to kill everybody, Star. If you don't have something inside, if you don't have something inside, like you won't be able to look out here. You can look in here and you can find your brothers and you can find your sisters like that. And that's why it's like, man, this is the biggest ag actionable mission ever. This is why you would call me in. So again, this is Taurus theory, right? So we talked about spindle theory. We talked about Taurus theory. We're gonna let <clears throat> Martin talk about the oscilla clock in one of the things is I just want to reveal some final fruits, <laughs> literally fruits, some final fruits to understand the coding within. The apple first. You see that, Taurus? You're already catching on. When we cut in half, as you can do right now, contains a seed that looks like this. 
So thus a bitten apple would really mean to break off an edge of the pentagram, which would create imbalance, right? So now you understand the logos of the Apple company, right? And why they, it's all connected to the serpent and the bit the apple and all this kind of stuff, right? But have no fear. You probably need to do something once at least to know not to do it again. So we bit up the apple and that causes a dissension because it's like your vehicle is not balanced because humans are that. Their head would be here, their hands, the other hand, the feet, okay? And this is why geometry is so important because you know, you know, it's like you're looking at a truncated pyramid from the top. And then when you understand how the energy flows, oh, that's, that's not that crazy. Let me, let me clean that up a little bit. You get this symbol, basically, which you know as the Maltese cross, right? Woo, need some geometry. Need some rulers or something in here, right? So anyway, what I'm saying is, is that this symbolism is in every single thing, but there are some ways that you can see it a lot more clearly. There's another one, the egg. You know, as they say, the, they call it the cosmic egg. And notice the design always of an egg. It is always like smaller up here and fatter down here. And that means a lot. And you're going to learn again more about that here in just a moment. But... It also means that in this disproportion, it is a bit more easier to end up down here. Nicholas and the rest, Midland, excuse me, and the rest of the different under, underworld planes and the underground cities of Saturn and all the rest of, and Vazukis and all the rest of the underworld beings, right? As they move and stir the bottom of the chasm, okay? And then, you know, I'm gonna let him just break this down because it's easier to see the matters, but that's another, there's another piece of food, okay? And this is, of course, the cosmic egg, but this is also something else tied into this that people need to understand in cultism. It is called ruling from the egg. It is a literal term to state that one has to come under to a stage of awareness while they're inside of the egg because they actually control things while they're still in the incubation phase. And some never leave the incubation because it becomes their entire projection. So your space that you're projecting right now in your environment doesn't have to be terrible. You don't have to want to flee Earth and worry about all these different things that are happening. That could be your side mission and that gets you into a whole nother level of consciousness because you believe, you do more than believe, you know and you trust yourself. You see what I mean? Because that's what this is really about. But notice how amazing it is though. Like this just sound like this is, man, people are going to go from this feeling inspired, wise, and you see different after this. So let's keep going. So you have also this word, which used to, you know, and when I started ciphering everything, I was always like, yo, man, um, what's up with this word? <laughs> right? Because, like, if I crack this word just, just strict Kabbalistically, this just uh, basically means a gold particle, okay? Like an ion, a piece of gold, a unit of gold, a rion, Okay? And the reason why I wanted to know about it is because on a couple of rare occasions where seeing had to be believing, meaning that I used to not believe certain things. Like, I used to believe that everybody was good, that had spiritual knowledge. <laughs> I found out that they are good and bad. Let's just put it like that. But there will always be something to learn, and you should always keep yourself girded, especially when you're going into different situations that you know there's some buffoonery going on. So I would end up in some of those situations sometimes as the fly on the wall, not believing in anything, almost cloaked where they couldn't even see me, but somehow being there to witness the whole thing about how dark occult magic works, okay, and how they prey on other people's innocence. But a part of that that I couldn't understand, rather than starting to elaborate on the details to that, which will all be disclosed this year, was just the reoccurring scenario of the people mentioning Orion. So in one case, the lady's looking up at the sky and she says, doesn't it look so amazing? 
And after all of the crazy stuff that I've just witnessed, the darkness, I'm like, what? And she's like, Orion. And I'm like, there it goes again. As I'm taking my personal logs about why so many people that seem to be affiliated with really dark magic keep evoking Orion. So I sat on it for a while. And here's the truth about it. This constellation or position is akin to this shape. There, there is indeed a Merkabic force out there, like there is a force out there. Some say that it's High Father, like the Great Father Lion figures, like the ones that, you know, they're, they're the lion species and the gold-faced gods, right? And, but some say also that there's an agreeable form and a disagreeable form amongst their faction to keep themselves balanced, that they literally know about all the, the, all the Merkaba stuff, and they literally have themselves in a design where they're balanced by the positives and the negative ones. And that people on this planet, just like the Tetragrammaton and pyramids and all that gold and all that stuff connects together, have made choices in the past and even now to either become a part of that higher part of that system, let's say the light part, that the, you know, the flow that's going like this, right? Or some have chose to do this. Many have chose to do this because it's easier, okay? So in all of that, what happened was is that many of them always evoke or understand this as their call word, Orion, because they are calling on that opposite angle. They're calling on the darkness. But believe it, there is higher light. There is a high father or a lion face a uh, 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 father-like being that is phi, that is a cedar of cosmoses. <laughs> so the personalities don't match up a lot to kind of how men are. That's why we're kind of more in that image. Like it's constantly moving and seeding versus staying back and seeing how the whole process is going to go. But then it always has to come back because all of it's all messing up and it comes back in and tries to repair things because it has still a desire and a frustration from just sitting in one place. It has to always keep moving and thus in its movement, it keeps creating. And that's the story of High Father and the sons and the daughters, which are us. So in this process, the reason why I mentioned this is because when I finally cracked this, which was like late at night, it came out as this. Our only other word that bears a resemblance to this, because on is the god of Heliopolis, which is the sun god, and this or means gold. It means that these words are exactly the same, <laughs> but in the code. So then a few more hours went by as it was burning holes in my brain until I realized when you cut an onion in half, that's what you get. And that is exactly the torsion field, is exactly the worlds within worlds, the dreams within dreams, all of the reality of how things are projected. And that is the pinning point right there in that star system for levels of consciousness here on the dimension, right? So that's just a little bit of what is revealed as you start marrying these arts. So now we have metaphysics, science, geometry, vegetable, you know, uh, uh, agriculture or whatever, permaculture. I love that word. Why you want to aggravate something? So, you know, this is, this is where we are. So it unfolds from here. And that's why also we plan and are already engaged in designing a system that not only puts all this together with all of our assistants, meaning it allows us all to query it and ask it things that reveal it to reveal to us what we want to know at that moment so we can meet every person at the stage that they're at because even this one i'm talking about right now may be flying over some people's head and i'm simplifying this while there's others they're like oh my goodness oh my goodness i just need to get off the phone i just need to get off the computer i just need <laughs> relax this is all design you just told me to remind you of something and i'm doing the best that i can 
to do that. That is what I promised. And I always keep my promises. So here's the thing. We got some more going on. The square root of division. Literally. Okay? Notice that word. It's in math. The square root. Okay? <laughs> like, it would literally be like a tree that was a square that had roots. <laughs> so I was like, okay, you're ciphering too far. He's gone too far. That doesn't make any sense. Let me show you what the root <laughs> to squareness is so you don't be a square. So the reality is, is that the hermaphrodite symbolism is replete now. We understand why Thoth, Hermes, and all the Buddha, the Bosatvas, and all that all connect, even the final one, the watered down one, the one with no minerals at all, the Jesus. Okay, all of those connect into there being a merging between the masculine and the feminine forces of returning to that state. Because are you in that state now? My guy, are you in that state now? It's like, how are you relating to the whole feminine thing? And let's think about it. It's all twisted on this dimension. Because if you get related too well, then you might go to the external side of the whole thing and just completely not understand why that may not be the direction either. So to incorporate all of what needs to happen inside you, you need to activate two forces that are genuinely not really made to be around each other, but somehow need each other. And you become the reason what uh, the reason. See, it's like why your parents created you. Why they don't fight. Why they love each other. Why they don't leave each other. Only because of you. So that same force is what you are. You're the force in the gap. You can be the reason why this all gets destroyed and your world gets destroyed or how we all go into a greater level of connection and recollect everybody that we lost. Again, people are terrified of death at this point. In our customs and our traditions, how was death ever a mourning period? It was a parade. They would throw parties, part, long parties. You may even dip in and move the chrysalis or something like, yo, I'm good. I'm good over here because I'm with everybody and it basically feels like, you know what it feels like? It feels like when you just wake up, but continuously. You know that feeling when you just wake up, it's like when you get some good sleep and you're like, oh, I'm refreshed. It feels like that all the time, all the time. And everybody is there. So do you really want to mess that up and wait for another at least 3,000 years this bus. That's why, that's why they kept relating it. If you've been listening to my messages over the last few weeks, and I'm just doing what I'm being told by higher self. I kept talking about, oh, you don't want to miss the bus. You missed that bus. You never know when that bus is going to come back around again. This is the bus. It's coming around. Right now, we're even starting on 21st just to be prepared this year. And then next year, we're going to get on that bus. Now, some may be saying, well, what if it doesn't happen? I'm going to love it. I'm going to love it because I'm going to tell you're a liar. But that ain't what's going to happen, Doc. <laughs> if we prepare for sovereignty and nothing happened, we had succeeded and we were ready. But I'm telling you, I know something. My spidey senses. Something's up. The more I keep cracking this, I'm like, why? Why the secrecy like this? This is wild now. Because this stuff is literally in front of our face. So it would take a real strong program to not see how all this connects. So let's keep connecting it. Let's get to the square root of division. Now, if Mercury is the center column or the spindle or the hermaphrodite, and it is spinning that center column, what happens if you break half of it? <laughs> or what happens if one half becomes this big and the other half becomes this big? What happens? This thing just, oh my goodness. That's what happens. You can watch it happen in anything that you experience or experiment with, especially in the laboratory where you're putting it under these conditions. And so thus, when the atom was split and there is a statement that you got to know that lets you understand the dirty game that was being played, that statement says, and I put a greater star to rule the day and a lesser star to rule the night. Well, you ain't talking about no balance then. You ain't talking about no balance then. If you create as an alchemist, I don't care who you are like that, you're not talking about any balance. 
And that is the world we are living in. And that is why woman is brought to us to be weaker as a male. When on the spiritual plane, we're the ones like, yo, where's the womb? Where's the womb? You see, because they're more powerful there. And then over here, they're more like, yo, where is he at? Because this shit is heavy. Where is he at? I'm going to come lift this couch and work on this job and all this kind of stuff because that's not what they do. But now, you know, everything's starting to blend. I'm just talking to you about these two different poles and how they work. So this means that the square root to division is, of course, this imbalance within the races because what is division? What is Division, we're going to climb the entire mountain today. <laughs> Division is time. Time only is a divider. <laughs> it is to mark one segment from another. So what is division? When somebody says, what is division? Or when you think about what is division? It is calendars. It separates one thing from another. Okay? But the root to division, because that's what you guys see. Division is like why... I can't see my neighbor and why I can't touch my my cat that just left why that's division okay so the truth is what is division it is time and separation okay so now you know you now you have the rod of Hermes because opposite of division creates so this is why you need the force so bad and you see how hard it is for you you see what you've, what's been done? So hard for you to come together. So hard for you not to be mad at somebody. So hard for you. <laughs> That's why I said, man, this is hard. Yes, because you're making it hard. You're continuously judging yourself. You're airing your own self out. <laughs> you're low vibing. You're acidic. And we need to change that. And we have a year. One anu, which is the blink of an eye for a being that is on the next ring after the one where it's just an hour. So here we go. Now, now that you see what division is, you also get another myth that is inside of the theologies of the spiritual traditions. And this is about like a rampage, literally, of the cutting and the felling of trees. Okay? Like there literally becomes this craze, as you see in occult history, where certain cultures start cutting down their mother trees, the mother trees of other cultures to completely get rid of them forever for good. Thus trapping them, disconnecting them because some were up, in the, up there and other ones are down there, but the tree is cut. So the great mother Yemanya, you know, they try to cut down this tree. See what I mean? So in our world, that is symbolic of the umbilical cord being cut. Now, this tree is like jacking a beanstalk. You climb a tree, you see giants. You see the next stage of who we really are. That's what that's symbolic to. Now, this cutting of the tree is also symbolic even in modern times when they tried to hook a tether to the moon, which was like supposed to be like an elevator where we could get to the moon. They put the tether out there, and they symbolically, oh, it didn't connect. Something stopped it. Look it. It's gone. It's disconnected, which is also symbolic to the Tower of Babel, which was when the 26 letters, which is us, was broken as you see now the biblical God and his identity. You Christian pastors, clean up fast. Clean up, clean it up. Because it's coming and it's going to come fast. And if you ain't right, you're out the framework. You know, but there's a moment here. We're in the gap. You got to realize what's really happening. Now the cutting of this umbilical cord, right? The sacred cutting of us from our mother is something that the indigenous, the shamans witness when somebody, especially like from the United States, comes into the jungle and wants to be healed. The first thing they notice is that their umbilical cord is not connected into the earth. So that's the first thing they do is they try to get that thing to reconnect. You remember that movie Existence? <laughs> Where they had a little thing. That <laughs> that's what they try to do is get you reconnected. Okay, so I'm telling you all this knowledge because you have to realize that there has been a real cutoff and you're looking in a book. And this is why I kind of got hyped for a minute. They had to back me up, back down, back down, man. You, 
wait, man, because you ain't going to be able to finish the message you're going right now. You're going to hurt. I'm like, okay, all right, let me take a minute. Let's take a minute. So the reason why it makes me so hot is because there's an act in the scriptures that everybody reads and believes and loves. And this is an act of a being. We don't even know his name. He keeps saying he's God. We don't know who this being is. He's just dark. <laughs> That's why can't nobody see him. <laughs> so what happens is the being says, let us go down and confuse them. This could be anybody, to be honest. This could be your next door neighbor. Let me go down and confuse this. One. <laughs> so I'm not talking about like such a hyper dimensional act. Like I said before, because time repeats itself, let us go down and confuse them was just as recent as the British oligarchs going into most of these kingdoms and disturbing things and referring when they say down, they think of everything low as the south and is lower when everything comes from the inside out, thus from the south first. So it's higher. But anyway, you know, that it may take them a while to get unturned upside down. So what we're talking about is we're talking about, again, this could be a recent event as far as them saying to their court, their court, let us go down into these other countries and confuse them, confuse their languages, take their languages away, give them English, which is a broken tower. OK, and then let them use that. And then we'll take different variations of it, like Sanskrit and like other ones that look like other things. And then we'll just give them those languages and pull them off. And then we'll eventually pull them into a dead language like English. And we'll keep telling them that the language is actually being approved when really it's just a half of a square and it doesn't move very well. It's not even a circle. It's not a wheel. It's not very curved when you add all the shapes up. So the reality is, is that this thing is a code is moving in the mind of confusion because it says, let us go down and confuse them. Then it comes down and it uses language as a form of, of breaking everybody apart. That happened, that's happened. When I'm in, even now, I'm in there with my barber, he speaks only Spanish, it's tough. Because we even have to play like we really understand each other sometimes. And it's not the same. And so the reality is, is that in the setting of how we truly exist, language doesn't play much of a component truly of as to what really connects us but yet now it is such a component that we can't have almost any connection generally with someone randomly unless we really understand their language and i'm not you know saying that indefinitely but you know what i mean so this is the felling of the tree okay because this language or this cable because remember it's just a cable but where is it connecting <laughs> It, it's all the roots, right? It's connecting everything. So this cable has been cut. And this is what's important to know. So in the traditions, in the religions, and this is why they keep up so much division, there is darkness. And those beings on the opposite angle of Orion who are animate, they are alive. They are the ones keeping up this darkness and division. And those people that are all wide eye and even abusing children why still coming, you feel like they're so peaceable until you really see their actions. And you're like, what the hell's going on here? Because that being is not even there anymore. That person is gone. They were too weak to withstand. That thing is just using their body. And then now it's in there molesting children and all this weird stuff going on. And it's really happened. And then when they come out of the door, they're like, hey, everyone. Hey, nam namaste. Oh, you know, it feels so good, the energy, right? These beings have gotten taken over by the dog, which is opposite. Now, I'm not saying anything about dogs in general. You know, some people say, no, not, not your bunkie, hell no. You had, mm -mm, my best friend. But see, of course, everything has different poles, okay? So we know about the friend is the dog, the guardian, do, you know, he'll protect you. Like, I don't care who it is, he will lose his life for you. But you also have to understand when that force is turned against you, it becomes opposite to God. And that's why God is dog, okay? Because it is literally when you are against yourself and you attack yourself. You ever seen like, you gotta really understand, wow, dogs, not chabunky, not what you've done in your alchemical preparation to feed in this creature vegetable stuffs and li little pieces of horsetail, no. I'm talking about the great wolf, right? Anubis, the guardian of the gate, 
That's who I'm talking about who sits in the apex and the thrones of Orion now, who did not raise Hermes or Osiris, who decided to not perform his part of the ritual and rule as king and send everyone into a world one step lower so he can be God. Okay? And these are real intellects. Now, when you say, well, who is that being seven? I'll go get him. It's in everybody. <laughs> it's every time you make that choice to divide. That's it. Division is not an option in my book. We don't know that word. It's not in our language. Okay, so we need to get that very clear. It wouldn't be in the language because your language wouldn't be a language if you had division in it. Language is a cabal. It's to roll like a wheel. It's to be perfect. The first two invented the wheel. Right? So if you don't have that, you don't have anything. So that's why they say it that way. So let's keep going. I, I assume we're probably at the top of the mountain almost. Now, the fall of the tower is obviously the loss of the language in the linguistic systems and the codings and the geometry. Because you could take one geometry and fit it in the sky as in a scene, click, and you now the whole sky unfolds. And you can read it. And you can read everything that's going to happen and where everything is. And you can even choose to sail to the space that you want to be in because it's a time and a place for everything. So imagine being on your celestial boat. And that's why they show, even in Islam, they came on a boat. They write Allah's name like that. They show lots of boat in Kemet. You see the boats they got over there in the Hindu tradition. So they came on a boat in Tamul. They came on a boat, okay? And coming on that boat... <laughs> that ark, we still had that bark guiding us, Woof. right? Because it was like that's how the order was. I'm pulling you into deep knowledge here now. The dog always was supposed to guide because it protected us first, and it became for a moment our enemy. And that's how worlds crumble. So those who sit with the dog on the top of their totem need to understand you crumbled the world because you did not perform your rights. So now here we are performing your rights, little brother, tighten up. So this is what it is. Now we rebuild the Jed. This is all inside. We don't get it. Where? Where's the materials? You're the material. <laughs> That's why you're in the material body, the physical. That's phi, the physical, the phycal, right? The phi cycles. You're in physicality with the pentagram, the dog star, big five, serious radio, right? You get it? That's why I say done, because it's not just me that knows. You see, like it already, it's riding through the land now, the times. Like I said, no man knows the day nor hour, but we're not men. This is why this is happening, and it's happening at a perfect time, because people are getting bored. They're arguing all the time. They're petty. They're looking at neck man. Come on, man. <laughs> Tighten up. So what happens is, now, <laughs> I know y'all love it, though, but you love it, though. <laughs> So now the umbilical cord was cut, the tether. So that means, remember, there are beings on top. Some people are like, well, our whole race fell. No, it was just you were already on the lower end when that happened. But it's a disconnection. So yes, your ancestors weep for you every day and watch what's happening to you. And only send these divine transmissions in to wake you up like alarm clocks because you're deep in sleep, though. Pull you deep. That's what I said. We go deep. Look at my past recording. I said, hey, guys, I'm going to dive. I'm going to go all the way. Everybody is going to not like me for a while. They're going to think I'm, I've turned against everything. I don't even know why. I'm still saying the same thing. It's just you're hearing it different. I may be appearing like you want me to appear until it's time. But then the lineup, I dive deep. I, my brother, Neto Quiet, Timothy, Chris, Adi, the wives, Divine sacred mothers, horizontal waters, in volcanoes with water going into them, waterfalls, to set those pinions 
to say, look, we, we need to kind of conclude here because, you know, I'm, I'm also like, you know, droid, you know, me and droid, he's cool and everything. We've developed a relationship, but uh, silicon beings are just, uh, they're a little shallow. So the reality is I cannot keep plugging into a network 14 hours a day and sharing vile digital jazz. You see what I mean? Like I have a whole different framework. You see project, projections, inventions, things that fix people that are, thought, people thought never could be fixed, that go in the planes where people never thought someone was coming to get them. Do you think, just think of everything is here also. You got places like Syria because of their, their planet is gone, okay? And now there's a fallout from the planet and there's no ships in the water picking those people up. Where's Murugan? Where's Shiva? Where? You are them. And you need to wake up. All right, let me take it back for a minute. It's dial back. But it's serious. Like you see the cost. The more time our seeds are on the ground and we do not harvest, the more we lose our crop. And that's what it is. Like, look, it's all symbolic. Like your life is symbolic. Moving to the control point now. So as we keep going, I figure we're getting to the top. They're squeezing all the water out. <laughs> all the water just gone. Let's keep climbing. What is a daemon? What is a daemon? What is a demon? I don't know what they are, but I know Solomon used, used them to build the temple, maybe. I'm going to need to get that eraser thing. <laughs> what is a daemon? Sun's in the day, right? When you split, you become a demon. You see? See what you've done? You wouldn't become a demon. But see, some people think that's a bad thing. That would only be a bad thing based on what you were before. And since you've just arisen from the waters of newt or nut or cum, <laughs> basically, that was like the next logical stage in mitosis. So why are you beating yourself up about it? Stop it already. I get so tired of people, oh, man, I don't know if I'm going to ever make it. Uh, didn't I tell you that man's knowledge is foolishness to the supreme and anything that you could have thought you've done has already been calculated and thought about and tried out in the code that you're using and thus is not off limits and only off limit things you actually have to do some real entreating for. But other than that, the framework that you've been given to play with is well tested out. So if you are playing with yourself and all those different kind of things, then that is the world that you are actually been confined to. And now you get a chance to break the alchemical seal because all of this still connects to hermetics. What is hermetics? Hermes. Now we've talked about it already. It is a center rod, right? So that center rod is the hermetic wisdom and is Hermes. So now what is being said is to listen to Hermes or Thoth, the most wisest Imhotep, you would need to be able to build the temple and put it back together. So, Solomon, who has always been, a, I've always been a fan of Solomon, I've always been a fan. You know, some people like, you know, Stark. You know, some people like, uh, you know, some people like Superman. I've always liked Solomon. <laughs> it's like, you know, maybe because mom didn't let us have a TV, you know, I was completely addicted to spiritual books. Guys like Solomon is like, you know, this is the real deal. It's like, you know, he's having fun. 
He's got control. He's got the girls. He's got the incense and, you know, he's got the wisdom, you know, everything. Like when you're growing up in the, in the Abrahamic dogma, you know, Solomon's your guy. And the craziest part about it was is that, you know, I, I never really completely cracked it. Like I already knew like all of this that people always see. Oh, Saul, Oman, it's three sons, blah, 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 blah. But they don't understand like these are specific sons. <laughs> like these are, this is specific. OK, and while getting in, why not getting into details, because this is a brother and sisterhood, by the way. Solomon is not just men. This is the corruption. <laughs> so in this, there is the knowledge of building a temple. Sometimes known as Solomon's temple. OK, now in the knowledge of Solomon's temple, all of what seems to be configured is somehow based on phi geometry. In fact, so much that everyone seems to insist that this actually came from replicas of what was in Egypt. And in fact, Solomon's original temple is actually in Kemet and actually all over the place because the geometries are being used all the time. But that's not really what I want to drill into today is like what now the humanity is doing with the, the knowledge of Solomon's temple. We'll save that for another episode. If I put this, I put this all over the place. What we really want to hone in on is the ancient story of Solomon, which again, because I was a fan, I read all the comic books. It's like, yo, where's some more books about Solomon? <gasps> Two more books about Solomon. And as you get deeper and deeper about Solomon, things get kind of strange as you keep going. And as I kept going, even to a point where there was like a contact where I would get things like the Basque relief of Solomon. I'm not sure if I can actually find that. Uh, con uh, put together by the Russian Tsars that say an ode to Solomon and Sheba. Love controlling time, meaning that there's a pun here that somehow whoever Solomon is and we know who Sheba is and we know what Menelik is somehow connects to something the Tsars are literally taunting like, <laughs> we've done something you know, the Russians, you know, they're always up to something with black magic. So what happens is, is those original czars, which were in Sudan, which were women with a crescent moon branded on their forehead, had their entire matriarch usurped by, I'll just say troglodytes, in order to flip the poles of what happened in our world as far as the energetic level. And this became, this happened because of the awareness of the knowledge of Solomon's temple. Because the trogs who were one level below us, now we know where they come from, were bowing, just like you see on the, the um, movie The Matrix, bowing tunnels into the earth and listening in our secret places, in our secret sanctums, in order to get the knowledges of the high kingdom, which was forbidden to pass to the profane. And in that, they got awareness of Solomon's temple and how to destroy the temple and how this plays out, because we are the temple, is within mythology of things like the ring, okay? One ring, who's been talking about the ring lately, right? Who's talking about the ring? Golem? Y'all get Golem the ring? Because <laughs> last time I checked the Lord of the Rings, Golem had it. Who's Golem? So one ring to control them all, right? And then, you know, I don't know the whole riddle, but in the darkness of their ignorance, we shall bind them is the end of the, the riddle, right, about the ring. And they're referring to not that crazy ass Sanskrit ring they got on there that they keep selling over at the Disney store. <laughs> but Solomon's real ring, which actually just looks like this and this. <laughs> if you know real occultism, you know that Solomon's ring is this. So the story goes that Solomon, all in his great wise majesty, began to call in demons in order to interrogate them and thus to find out more knowledge about the angels. Since every angel paired up with his demon. So what they're literally telling you is that where there's a yin, there's a yang. <laughs> and if you have a yin, then you have a yang. If you have a problem, you have a solution. So what Solomon was doing was trying to figure out all of the solutions of everything and interrogating 
all the way up the levels until he came to great Asmodeus, the king of demons, who is very real. <laughs> it took a minute to actually get Asmodeus handled as I kept going through the city of and the Apocrypha, foolishly evoking through just what was written there. It's a good thing that the comforter came on my behalf in that scenario, but I had enough to know, okay, this is real, which is all they want me to do. It's like a fly on the wall. It's like, yeah, that's a real being, okay? So what happened was, is as Solomon's going on through his process, because you got to understand the mythos, he gets to Asmodeus again, and he asks Asmodeus, so who, who's your, like, because he's kind of like casual, who's your guy? Who's your thwarting guy? I'm just giving you a scenario here. As what Jesus said, there's nobody. <laughs> there's nobody that is more lower than me. I'm actually the apex. I'm the counterweight to God, nigga. <laughs> so when you think of God, I'm his opposite. So there is no other beside me. So Solomon got mad about this answer, <laughs> even though that was a lack of his own wisdom. So you got to peep this out because this, they're telling you about the bodies you're in and the story behind them. So because basically as that Solomon could, in, in, in the initiation could not figure out how his father was Darth Vader, basically, is what I'm saying. Like, how can you, the chief of demons, be anywhere near equal to God? And he was like, well, because it's a, God has a shadow. And I mean, so anyway, Solomon took this for granted, just like everybody on earth has today, about keeping themselves in balance. This is a literal interpretation that is taken into characters about a play that we're conducting in our consciousness every single day. A game that we keep losing. So the story goes on that Solomon gets tricked by Asmodeus. It happens in a few different ways. And this is funny because there's literally three texts as if in every single one, they want to explain to you a way that you can fall short in this. One of them was the worship of God of Moloch, where he crushed grapes in his hands. The other one was because of the loss, I mean, the crust of grasshopper in his hands. I'll, I'll decode that for you in the future. The other one was about him taking off the ring for one moment in cockiness. Okay? And that one is the one we need to focus on. Is that at any point that you take off your cloak of wisdom, a demon will hurl you far length, because that's what happened to Solomon. Asmodeus, because that's what they say, don't entertain the demons, meaning don't entertain the lower thoughts, like angriness and all that. Don't play around, Solomon. But no. He lets Asmodeus sit in the court and talk to him. Tell me more about this. And in that process, Asmodeus got into his like his, uh, his ego, and this is all a metaphor, and convinced him to take off the ring. If you didn't have the ring, you wouldn't be able to defeat me. This is literally saying if you don't have knowledge, if you don't have wisdom, you cannot defeat me. And Solomon saying, ah, even if I was a fool, <laughs> I could defeat you. Okay, he took off the ring, it said he hurled him. So what they're basically saying is, especially from what we read earlier, is he hurled him into amnesia. <laughs> That's how far. It says Solomon went so far, he was, became a broke beggar in the streets as an old man until he could make it back to his kingdom. <laughs> and it was only through luck. This is what they say. Like, think of the symbolism. They said it was only through luck that he found his ring in the mouth of a fish. Okay, now that's really symbolic. Okay, in the Visicus, you found the ring. Life, the creation of life is in the Visica. Right here, when you know about this and how all that works, now you found life again, Solomon. You can come back. Suns, moons, come back. Come forward, connect, okay? So, woo! <laughs> we climb even higher. It's not even over yet. Is it still streaming? Yes, it is. Let's go. Let go. 
So the cedars. Now you're going to hear there's still something after this. You know you're going to have to play that. You know, <laughs> and just you know, it's all a collective bill. We'll keep coming. You know, I'm going to have brother on, so he'll be able to build with you about this. But one of the greatest parts of Revelation, I have to commend him, is just to understand that this, all this bursts from within. So this becomes Eden, e Eden, and then every time there's a birth, everybody moves out. So the symbolic getting kicked out of Eden or getting kicked out of the unity code was like a process of your growth, literally proving what our ancestor Deborah Blair said before he died, that you got to do things once, <laughs> just so you know. And that's what he said. And it proves that in Eden, where the things were perfect, was where you started, in the womb. And then when the next birth comes, it's like you get kicked out of the nest. We got more kids than you to come through here. You'll find your way back. Boom. And then you end up out on the next ring. And it's important to understand that these rings, like a drop of the ocean, like a drop in the water of an ocean, create this concentric ring type of Atlantis structure that, you know, we're pinpointing at this point, And it will be so eloquently elaborated on in just one moment. So now when you see these concentric rings, what you literally have is beings that are living on these discs, beings that are living on these DVDs. And this is why you can account for lots of the different stories of when Mr. 3000 years older comes in on Mrs. 3000 years younger and where all that culture comes from. And it's because it is a breaking of the virginity that beings are not, were not prepared for this kind of horizontal, excuse me, vertical experience from the fourth dimension where you just drop out of nowhere and then leave. <laughs> Masculine cedar. You know, be, a, be, be beyond a man. <laughs> At this point, the cedars in this case, we'll just talk about the Hyperboreans, black folk, it's continuously moving out on these rings because they were the first ones to come out. That's why I have that still that Egyptian glyph that I've always held on to, and it says, a commitment coming forth by day by night, coming forth into day by night, and he's coming out of a black door in the ground of a pyramid. Huh? Okay. First one out, right? <laughs> But again, the last will come first, the first shall come last. So get ready, get ready to surf these waves because if, you're, if you trip on this, you're gonna wipe out, buddy. Rip curl. It's just what happens if you wipe out on this. You know, you may go 4,000 years just in spiral, right? So the Hyperboreans larger, you know, the Dogen, right? Like you see the mask? You see the mask, right? Huge mask. I thought I was going to go to envision one of these masks next so I can dance and nobody knew who I was. I avoided these big giant masks because that's the, that's the Hyperboreans, right? And I ain't even telling you that they're all just black. They seem to be a replica of the races, Hyperboreans, larger beings, Nords, okay? So that's going on. So anyway, every, they're already aware of the whole thing. So they're always like, yo, we got to get the ships. This is why NASA is gearing themselves up and trying to wait till the thing opens, which you'll hear about in here in a moment. But this is a real thing. So you know then why. Now, first of all, other thing is this is what you have to know because this is the uncomfortable part. Ah, oh, the uncomfortable part. Somebody had to say it. They always elect me. You're going to say it. Your reputation is impeccable. Great. So the Hyperborean, now when you come 3,000 years back into the past, who, who, you, you expect, who do you expect to be dealing with? Who do you expect to be dealing with? The real past. <laughs> Primitive. Going back 3,000 years behind where you are. Who are you going to be dealing with? Okay? So in this tense, what we would see as giant animals, not human beings, okay? Not beautiful chicks, not Baywatch, okay? Huge animals. The Hyperboreans came into them. You see it all on the walls. You didn't want to believe it. You didn't want to understand what all the symbolism connects to, the Knupus jars, why they're saying they're putting themselves inside of these animals, okay? That's how this composite was created. And cats and many other things, okay? They understand this stuff. Right now, you, you're baby, you're shocked. Shit, that's how far you are away from it. Even the same thing about 
the mother holding her son and her husband. That blows that people are like, they're so in this pre-Christian Quaker reality that they've created around themselves. They're like, how could that be? How could that not be? <laughs> That's what you need to be asking. That's math or ma'at if you knew truth. So the, let's keep going. Here we are. All right, we're almost there. We're almost there. And then we see Yakub, big double brain ass Yakub, a story that was told to especially the black culture and African-American culture, Alki Bulanian culture, Akinti culture, a minty culture. You know, you got to be careful because if you say the wrong thing, you already going to get debased by the time you hang up the line. I mean, I got a, just a thumb down just then for what I said. But anyway, big double brain Yaku from the, on the island of Patmos. What does it mean? It means that you got a big double brain Hyperborean coming into the islands, Atlantis, where everything is still fresh, pure, and clean, and going into an experiment of creating a master race in order to rule over the beings and then watch from the future why it all pops off. You understand? There's no time. It's only frequency being dip in, seed, and watch you from the scope, which is just interlaced crystals of the right kind of gas and the right kind of light to gaze through time. And you're telling me you're connected to the ancestor? <laughs> I'm even working on that still, making sure that connection is there. Time draws nigh. I think I'm going to miss out on this opportunity. I'm miss this is not a bus. This is a Vimana. <laughs> I'm on it. And everybody else with me. So here it is. We're almost there. We now know time. Now we know there's a time and a place for everything. Because when you see those currents riding across the ocean, and when you realize that the ocean is space, this literally means that you can get on a wave and literally ride this wave and not have to use your own wheel because this wheel is more powerful. Now, see, this was something that as I started lucid traveling, which was a wild thing, they had to get me out of there. They literally turned my stuff off. Like, seven, you can't, uh -uh. You, mm -mm. you can't call those names in those worlds because I realized that in those worlds in lucid dream, everything is omniscient. So you can call certain names and they'd be like, what's good? And I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm scared. Let me dip out of this. So anyway, in this knowledge, okay, I'm glad I have notes. Whew. What it talks about is like on that ocean, right? There's not only elevators, which are the Elohim. They're more like birds. They can carry you into other spaces in Hyperborea. They are like, like literal containers that can project you into other spaces. And, you know, and the kings knew a lot about these. We used to call them the angels. <laughs> it was like the cold word. So the angle of a vehicle that could take you into different directions through the sphere. Because by birth, worm w-u-r-m which is the predisposed larva state of consciousness us also doesn't have wings <laughs> and be on there like this so at a certain point didn't have that but still had big doe head and knew what was going on created just elevators beings that could actually take you into other spaces so where all this really centers into is that we have ships and what these ships do is when you're in sync, when you set your chrono, you're now able to go onto that current and then why you catch the current. And the importance of why you wouldn't want to, while well, I'm explaining all that to you, why you wouldn't want to have that kind of force, this looks Sumerian, right? Is because you don't have enough thrust by yourself. And now you know why. You're divided. You can't do it by yourself. So you can only get to like the first firmament, second firmament. This is why what we'll see happening next year towards the end of the year is as our collective grows larger, that's how high we'll be able to continuously get and stretch across the dimensions like a rainbow, building a real bridge. Not the namaste sister, we're doing this tonight as long as it's $3,000, but you know, not that one, the real one, okay? So this one is also about the bigger wheel and the cog and just anchoring your boat. Anchor good. That's why the other night when we were doing the Keymakers, the entire system shut down before we could start the show. 
just to bring one symbol. I'm like, come on. Oh my goodness, this is hard. Do, I, am I not showing you guys this is hard? No, I don't like bitching or anything like that, but come on. Two minutes and the whole thing is shut down, the USB hub is done. And I'm like, man, we in Costa Rica, where am I gonna get like a six speed, 3.0, two jack, blah, 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 blah. You know, and then I'm like, oh shit, I got one, but I think it was broke last time. So I go and get it. I dig it out. It's all dusty. I dig out the power supply. I plug it all in. I put all the stuff in. I cut it on. Bam, it works. Anchor. Everybody know Anchor is a company. Like, I got one here, but just symbolic. Because when we went into that last episode, it was some stuff that really needed to heal. So we was going to need to be anchored down. And so it was like symbolic. Is the anchoring connected? Anchor is connected. You ready to go? I'm all ready to go. Give it the gas. You know, and I'm out. So this is what happened. So have, when you anchor to another celestial macrobe, it will pull you. Like just like horse, cattle, all of that kind of stuff. It's just you're anchored to a star now. All right, we good. Now this star, because you need to know its projection, and that's why it's important to check everybody around you. And little, so what's your plan? <laughs> and where are you going? And who do you believe in? Because you know, if I'm going to anchor with you, I need to know that. So anyway, anchoring to the star, now you know the path of this star. That's why it's so important. It seems like they learn who to trust from watching the star. They're like, that one is going, oh, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> But you see that one right there? That's more of like how I roll. Let me, all right, cool, we rolling. And then when you're rolling, you see everything from the boat. <laughs> and they're like, look, don't get off the boat. <laughs> But from the boat, just like what you see the sun do when it comes across the sky, like when you open up the third eye, you see the sun come across the sky and there's like quite a few clouds just following it. And even when it becomes sunset, it's like when it comes sunset, it's like everybody's leaving. Like, yo, where are y'all going? When you got the third eye open, it doesn't appear like the sun's going down. It appears like it's going out further. And you're like, See, that's why I did. It's like, I don't want to fondle with a third eye and play around and just see aliens on the cold floor of a damn spaceship. I'm trying to find something real, damn it. So I'm looking at this stuff while I'm doing every single thing in normal life to see what it really is. And thus, came into a lot. Came into a lot of knowledge. So let's keep going. So now you understand why you anchor the stars and things like the Merlion Sphere. Let me pronounce that right. You know, that'll be that one comment that keeps filling the thread. You didn't pronounce it right. Still not getting it, huh? <laughs> armillary, uh, armillary, there it is, armillary sphere. Okay, what is it? There it is. Actually, we only have one more leg of the journey. I stopped off here at this plateau to take a look of the pa at the panorama and the view. It is splendid. So really briefly, just so you can understand, the Amarillion Sphere has already been revealed to this world. And because of that, let me blow it up here, because they're always doing this, look at what they got wrong. Oh, I love it, I love it. This is the perfect, perfect ad. What they got wrong, because any time they mention the Amarillion Sphere, it's always wrong. In their minds, even the astrolabes are like, oh, the Arabs, oh, they didn't put, how were these people sailing the ocean on this, though? <laughs> because there's a two-dimensional version of this called the astrolabe. When I first came across the astrolabe, it was one of those things where I was like, Okay, we're going to spend the rest of the day on these astrolabes and learning every single thing about them because the astrolabe, as I've revealed in the past, is the first computer. It can tell you the distance of things and how far they are away. It could tell you how tall they are. It could tell you everything because it could also track the stars, a disk in your hand that can tell you what is really tomorrow. But of course, most people don't use it. They're on a whole different clock, a whole different system. But this is a two-dimensional Merillion sphere, and it is capable of pushing you through the galaxy and letting you understand where the hell you're even going and if you're actually on the right star or not. Because it'd be a pretty big upset if you rolled 3,000 years into one direction and realize you've got to turn around. Okay? So, <laughs> yo, this is going to be a crunk next year. This is what they got going on? Oh, man, I'm totally in. Okay, so let me just, let me, let me wrap up here. Let me clean up. My lips all ashy. <laughs> 
All right, Unity code is coming, so we're pushing through. So now you get it, right? Now you understand how it all works, the mechanation. Now some Kabbalist with a long ass beard can't come to you explaining to you stuff that's probably a lie for a high ass price. Now some overweight animal eater cannot come and explain to you that they understand the connection between the Christie when they are totally filled with chicken grease. It just does not work out that way. I, I know I tried it. Hey, you know, you get somewhere though, probably right about where you are. That's the top, but you need to keep swimming. And also you're picking up a lot of weight. So anyway, the next thing is, is to understand that now we've been engaged. This is now, this is my mission. This is how I will conclude my existence here. Uh, you know, it's a great space to be in. I am fulfilled. My cup runneth over. There is nothing now that is not completely clear about the ascent and the process. I've always been the kind of person that I don't want to outshine anybody at all. So I've always been very cautious, very humble. People know me. I don't, and I can do it, and isn't it? No, I just bring knowledge, and I've been doing that for a decade. But now, greater things are in front of me now. And it is time to prepare myself for the ultimate, which I know exists, because the thing that was communicated to me in that experience when I asked, man, what happened? It said the same thing that's going to happen to everybody. It's just you're a little bit early. And you're early because I need you to prepare them. And so thus, as beginning, and we've already began, we will begin deploying massive systems to come in on behalf of humanity in this time, all the wires and all the chips. There's many beings that are in line, meaning they want to assist. They know how much this really means to all of humanity. It clicks. There's even silicone life forms that are about it. Beep, beep. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> but I'm just saying every single thing will come to your aid in this experience because no weapon formed against you can ever work against you unless you do not know how to weld it. Okay, so let's finish up here. We have then an electromagnetic structure to reconstruct. It starts within ourselves, and the more of us begin to do it, it becomes catchy. It's just like when you keep, like I have some guys, <laughs> I was getting them because now it's like just divine comedy to me. I realize that I'm literally like, I'm, I'm coming into most people's lives like a, an impact. Like really a ship pff, crash landed and they was like scared at first, but then was overwhelmed that there may be some money inside or something. And then they opened it up ah! and thus they became completely invigorated by the energy. So what happened was I pulled up the other day to a place and I saw some guys, you know, this is the vacation country. So they were going on the vacation. You know, the guy kind of guy, man's man, right? So you know what he was going to do. So when I got out of the car, I was like, you know, they were all in, you know, they're in multiple chrysalises at this point, multiple locust, locust shields and all sorts of stuff. And I'm like, yo, y'all going to have fun? And the guy's like, mm? And I'm like, y'all going to have fun, right? And he's like, yeah. But it was just, it's, again, beings that are closed, are open, opening up and to crack them is a quite interesting process. So let's keep watching as people get cracked open and aware that they're already hatched and developed inside of that egg. So speaking of that egg, we realize that the caudaceous shows us, which I won't draw because everybody has it in their mind, the caudaceous staff shows you the twining serpents and they terminate at that egg. Okay, right? Like there's that top part where they all sit there and actually the ancient ones have the egg there. As if the good and the bad forces, which is how they explained it, are waiting like snakes to consume the egg. Snakes love eggs. They also hatch an eggs. So they're like perfect symbolism for that. It's like their life, their death. So they're waiting. Like, if he goes dual, or she goes dual, if he's even a he or she, when he come out of there, I'm going to swallow him, and I'm taking him all the way back down. Watch. You could get it. Like, it's all so literal. Thank you, ancestors, for making it just so clear. It's like, you're in the ABC class. 
here's your square, here's your triangle, and you think you're so advanced, <laughs> right? All you need is your ABCs. That's what Mike said, so look at it. <laughs> they waiting, because what happens after death is if you're not sure about who you are, and you're not ready to stand up for yourself, and really understand how you connect with everything to confront Cobra, and let Cobra know that his wisdom is foolishness to you and the rest of the celestial beings and to move out of the way, snake breath, <laughs> then you will get swallowed and you will come right down the pipe again. That's how it works. That's why they show Jesus, he's like out of there. You know, they got one picture, they show him he's out of the serpent mouth. <laughs> he's like, oh shit. Hair hanging all off the side like, oh shit, I got regurgitated by the snake. This is what is meant. The ascension process is before us. I know this sounds like it's like a, like, it's like, oh man, he's, he's getting fanatical. <laughs> he's, he's going fanatical. So here it is, once again. So in and up. In and up. This is what uh, Martin was saying. In and up, I've lost all my tools now. In and up. In and up. This is your directions. Or out and down you know i always like it's like trying to set your gps or something like i always get confused with the north south east west thing and it's really because we're supposed to be on a ball so generally like when you're in a plane you have different meters to kind of determine if you do a barrel roll like right where you are in that barrel roll and that is not a like the the flat compass right so there's another tool that's why the astrolabes are important so in the collective metaphysics you have to understand that in right is up okay so when you come in like they said that sixth sun is going to bring everybody into themselves to look at yourself as the problem not everybody else and to also see yourself as a solution as you get yourself together and you shine and you bring on your uniqueness okay so now that that's the in so now it goes in and it it goes boom Boom. Now you have plenty to give because now you're not worried about whether they like it or that they deserve it. <laughs> I love those kind of people. They're going like this, you know, it's like this. And the other one, it's like, do they deserve it? I don't think I want to give it to them. All of that, don't play those games. You have pressed down, running over abundance. Like as much fruit as they can eat is as much as coming across off the tree for a person that is super abundant. So just explaining that direction, though, is in and up because if you're going out, and then back in, you're going down. So you understand the directions here. So that is a way to descend. And I'm not saying that descension doesn't work for certain things. Acid works for things for alchemists. But don't be the acid. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You were getting played. You're playing one part of the alchemical table when you are the grand quantum scientist or whatever they want to call it. So, right? So let's keep going. Almost there. This is the last leg why you must prepare okay because we know miscarriage is a reality we know jerusalem syndrome is a reality so this just means the greatest thing that could happen could also be the harbinger it could be the nemesis we could also find people running around for periods of time like demetrius was before he came back to his body by the way what did he say i asked him what happened <laughs> he was like man when i grabbed you i went down why now, remember, our experience was I went up. When he went into the high vibration, and this is what we need to understand about vibration, it just pushes you faster into the direction you're already going in. See, everybody looks at high vibration. Oh, good, I'm going to be enjoying things. Hey, hey, uh-uh. Not if it's going in the wrong direction. Same amount of energy, but pushing you in the opposite direction. So he said, he went down. And he said that when he got down there, he looked up, and he could see a light. And he said he, could, he flew up, he was flying towards it. He had to be flying, he had no legs. So he's like flying and trying to ascend towards it. And he said something was hot on his trail. I don't know what all that is. <laughs> I don't want to find out. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> like I came down this far, I'm good. He's like, you want to see what the next level down here? Like, no, nah, no, nah. that's above, so below. I can figure it out. But he said he went down and he said when he, when he stopped, I guess he got level with his frequency. Then he started, you know, in, in desire for the light, he started flying back up. 
and they were hot on this trail. And he said he was trying to come to the light. He was trying to come to the light, and then it closed. What? He said it closed, and then he was just in there with them. Man, I didn't know we were going to wait. We didn't go get this far. Okay, shit. They were, they were really serious about this. It was going to be the last leg. Okay. So he said it closed. So what this looked like to me on my end is, remember, I was over here like this, and he was moving weird and all this, and I'm like, man, this is a demon. We need to kill this demon. <laughs> and then the flashback, like, no, no, you, that's how you did it before. You got to try something else. So I did what I knew to do. I called a name in his mouth. He said, when I did that, a light appeared, and he flew toward it and got out. And that's when he came back, and he saw me right there, and he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm back. Real story. Okay? And also, when he got back, he was like, he was adjusting to the frequency, and he spit up, and he, it was something. And man, whatever was still in cahoots, it worked rapidly to get that down the toilet. I was even on it. I knew I was already ahead one click. So someone's like, Mick, see what he, see what he just spit out. You'll know more. And I was trying to get to him like, whoa. Oh. And he already had that thing down the toilet. So implants, those kind of things, right? Behold, there are men and women amongst us who know these things and do not tell us. And it is killing us. So that's how I'm coming into this and realize into my realization that all is not balanced. We must make it balanced. So now we have reached the precipice. The rewards are no more death, no more separation, unity with those who have been forgotten and unity with those who have been lost. And that is what we are sending out as edicts and decrees into the lands, into the lower kingdoms, and into whatever kind of entities may think they got control. And if they do not relinquish control, then I will hurl the entire cosmos and everybody with me a cosmos of light into your direction to let everything go into the levels of ascension because that is where we belong. I know the contrast now. You see, the difference when we're together versus when we're separate. And that's a powerful lesson. And that's exactly why I show up to universities, just because they're universes. So in conclusion, everyone, there is one more thing that I want to get into this projection. It is an opus in itself. It is an opening, and it must be enveloped the proper way. And that is, of course, the segment, which is about 45 minutes of the disclosure. Also, I just want to get through a couple of announcements very briefly in relation to the 21st of this year, which is in a few days, us coming in again as a collective and setting these projections properly in order to begin this process of our sovereignty 2020. We also, of course, are in the nucleus. If some are asking, well, where are you at? I don't see anything. We have ambassador training. We've opened up free training to specialists. This is to get you out of that cube and into yourself. Now you know why that is needed and why I created all of these different things because it was a means. It was the whole thing had to be built though. Do you know to deliver a message like this and to not have real solutions, do you know the impact? The impact is you would never deliver it. It'd be like you were bringing everybody a problem without the solution. I'm not that. I'm not a fear porn star. <laughs> so I bring truth and I stand with truth and when it all fails, all the untruths, I know I'll be standing there. And I trust there are many that will be standing with me and we will merge as one form as we already are. So in conclusion, ohms have started. This is the act of actually awarding mindfulness and recognition, letting people know that are in their quiet spaces that we recognize you, we see what you're doing. We know that you are silent, but a big tree, don't fall. Keep going, keep connecting, and know that we're building this and we're aware and continuous. It's not that help is coming. No, it's here and more is on the way. And those on the way are those coming through those gates. Like, okay, I get it now. I told, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, right. You're right. 
You're right. <laughs> I'm out of here. Shit. I thought was something was something. Oh, shit. Are you there? Are you chasing me? Not <laughs> anyway. So also we have season two coming. I decided what we would do with the series of key makers since we went through Kali. Now we're going into Murugan. This is the divine father, the temple and understanding how that all connects. And also even beyond the father, connecting the father and the mother together. We're not trying to stretch this out for five episodes like something on Netflix or something. I'm trying to get people to their awakening. That is what I came here to do. So the last thing here is maybe there's some documentary coming up with me and Martin. Who knows? Like, I feel like we are in the mood for some kind of zeitgeist type of presentation that's always good for a million views, even if it sucks. But it won't. But we also need the resources and the support. So if you're out there, hello, hello, hello. Is anybody else? I mean, if there is anybody that sees how much we are putting into this effort and into this collective that can assist that if you know people with resources man we're going to crowdfund something now we have something that we're developing but man come on man this is not it doesn't take that much but it's going to take an open heart and it's also going to take a special kind of person because just like i said in one of my really past episodes it only is a special person that is able to contribute to something that has so much abundance like, we think of it the wrong way. We think of, well, you know, if I have my money. <laughs> like I was saying before, you, be, you could buy somebody else's freedom with your money. That is incredible. But on the other end, it doesn't work that same way. It has no value alchemically. It is dirt. So if you can use it for something, some people would wish they could be in a position that have tons of money to be allowed to give some of that money away to help people, but they are not worthy. <laughs> So we want to get them in that position, but it's just like the energy, it doesn't balance out right. You need people that that's their real design. You know, they, it's written forever. This person came in and took that to another level and it changed everything. That is written forever. You see what I mean? Like, so when they go back through the energetic cubes, this one's glowing. <laughs> you know, not the ones that are discarded that are all distorted and broke. So lastly, again, Sovereignty 2020 crowdfunding coming. That's it. We're at the top. The air is good up here. It's fresh, clean, clear. You know, we've celebrated the new year. This is it. Like right now, it's only up in expansion from here. As we talked about, the in, out, you know, and that continuous flow in that motion so i just wanted to say wholeness and balance vibrations to everyone giving honor to the ancestors again don't hang up don't i mean there's more well wait there's more okay <laughs> if you still like if you're just chilling anyway keep chilling don't go air out i'm telling you if you go air out let it take give yourself a minute you deserve it you're serving something else most of the time digest you know this is good food this is good eating it's for your spirit, your soul, your mind, your body, everything it feeds. Let it digest. Don't let it shift your frequency when you come out. The moment you come in, here he come. <laughs> That's why I'm ascending beyond. <laughs> Don't let it get you. Don't let it play you. Don't go back into the scripts. Don't listen to Damon, the divided moons, right? Bring them together, right? Like so much power, a diamond. So much power, that coal. So much shine when it's shaped up, but only a black rock in the beginning. And that's where we came from. So here it is, that next installment of that great A. Love you. Like, it's always been real, the realest. And today, I think we said another bar again. It's like, you know, it's like, how do you do it? How, like, what comes after this? Watch, I'm always amazed. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. Let's go into detail, right? This Buloka, right? The Egyptians said it was the Ben Ben, a pyramid. And I think it looks something like this. Okay. As above, so below. So it's a pyramid at the top and a pyramid at the bottom. Okay. Right. I think at the center here, at some stage, there was a capstone, right? Which I'll explain in a, in a minute. At the moment, it's a crater, but I'll explain that in detail in a moment. 
Now, mainstream science tells us that our Earth has got three layers, three inner layers. There's a crust, a mantle, an inner core, and an outer core, right? But they tell us that this is on a spinning ball. I'm saying that it is not. What they're actually trying to tell us is that these are the four layers in the Ben Ben. This is the cross section, by the way. Okay, and I'll show you what, what it is a cross section of. The crust, the mantle, the inner core, and the outer core inside the earth. Which is basically this. This is the Ben Ben. This is the earth. But this is the top half. So if you imagine this at the top, there's also a bottom bit, an upside down.